Welcome back to the best damn fitness, health, and anything, anything else podcast in the world. It's Mind Pump, and here's what we're doing for the giveaway right now. So this month, we put MAPS Performance and MAPS Aesthetic on sale. They're both 50% off, so I'm going to give those two away for free to one of you lucky viewers, both of them, okay? So here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notification. Do all of those things. If we pick your comment... We'll notify you, and you'll get access to MAPS Performance and MAPS Aesthetic. MAPS Performance is an athletic-minded workout program, so it's like train like an athlete, perform like an athlete, look like an athlete, unconventional training. You're moving laterally. You're rotating. Really fun workout. MAPS Aesthetic is bodybuilder style, right? So that's more about developing balance and symmetry and sculpting and building muscle. Now, they're both 50% off. If you're interested in buying them, here's what you got to do for the half off. For MAPS Performance, go to mapsgreen.com. For MAPS Aesthetic, go to mapsblack.com. And then the code for both of them for 50% off is FEB50. So use that code. Go to MAPS Green or MAPS Black. Get the 50% off. By the way, you can get both of them with that discount code. All right, here comes the show. Do you want a youthful hormone profile? Tell your body to build muscle. All right. You know, it's funny. When I talk about uh, resistance training and strength training on, you know, because obviously I wrote... Uh, with the book that I wrote, The Resistance Training Revolution, one of the things that people find the most fascinating is the effects that strength training has on your hormones. Now, studies will show that it consistently raises testosterone in men, balances out estrogen, progesterone in women. You get a nice insulin response, growth hormone. Cortisol becomes a healthy response. And, and what it does is it looks like the kind of youthful hormone profile that everybody's after. Mm. So the question is always like, why does strength training do that? And it's because when you send a signal to your body to build muscle, that's the that's the step before the muscle build, building actually happens. Your body's telling your hormones to organize themselves in a way to build muscle. And so it looks like a youthful hormone profile. So the second question is, why do we have that hormone profile when we're youthful? Your body's building and growing when you're mm -hmm. youth. When you're now, young. is this in the context of uh, you're doing all the right things to build muscle for you to have this youthful type hormone profile, or is it just simply if I am training to send a muscle building signal to my body, i.e., lifting weights, mm -hmm. I'm going to get the benefits of that? Well, don't you still have to have all the other? Well, you have to have everything in, in alignment in mm -hmm. order to be effective in building. Yeah, muscle, I, I mean, you too. could send a, a loud muscle building signal and get no sleep. Right. right? So that's like my that. that's my point. So it's yeah, not like your wheels. hey. All you do is go lift weights. No, and but it is the, it is the key, right? Because when your body well, says the big rock of the, the yeah, because when it says when it, when it's like okay, we need to build muscle. What it does is it starts to organize its hormones in a way to do that, and so that's why you see this raise of testosterone. You know, the other thing you see in men, which is I think even more important than the testosterone raising, is the upregulation of androgen receptors. Right, so. These are the receptors that testosterone attaches to. So, and in studies, they show that it's not so much testosterone levels that'll dictate how much strength and muscle a man will build, but rather how many androgen receptors they have. So, like a guy with high testosterone with low androgen receptor density isn't gonna do as well as a guy with lower testosterone with more androgen receptors. So when you lift weights, your body opens up more of these androgen receptors, making it more sensitive. To testosterone. Why? Again, because your body's like, okay, we need strength. We need muscle. Let's organize things in a way to promote that. And the only time in your life, one of the only times in your life when this is just happens for you is when you're, you're a teenager, when you're mm -hmm. growing. Like you go from the age of like 15 to 19, if you're a guy, you don't need to lift weights to build muscle. It just kind of starts to happen. Now, is it, is it always beneficial to have more uh, androgen receptors, or is there sometimes is there is there sometimes a drawback to that? Is it all positive if having more? If it's natural, if it's natural, yes. And I'm, of course, I'm assuming there could be an extreme case, but I'm I'm not aware of what that would look like. But what that would mean is more drive, motivation, energy, fat loss, muscle building. You'd have better insulin sensitivity, so lower risk of things like diabetes, diabetes, lower rates of dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, which the, this has all been, you know, connected to. Um, and then in women, by the way, you know, we talk about testosterone. We always talk about men. Testosterone plays a very important role in women as well. And of course, their bodies have much less of it. But low testosterone in women uh, causes the same effects that you see in men. Low libido, low drive, higher body fat, less muscle. 
you know, less energy. So, you know, these beneficial effects from testosterone happen for women as well. Now, what's not going to happen for women is their testosterone levels aren't going to go so high that they get, you know, masculinizing effects. That's not going to mm -hmm. happen from lifting weights. It stays within the kind of healthy range or whatever. Yeah, I just think like in terms of like muscle building being the fountain of youth, when you look at the gym and you see like somebody older with like a decent amount of muscle, you can see it all the way from like the youthfulness in their skin too as well. It seems that like, you know, not only are they strong and able body and their movement and everything looks, you know, more youthful, but also it seems to carry over into, you know, the other systems. Dude, you, you said uh, fountain of youth. It's 100%, right? If, you, if you're older, okay, when I was a trainer towards the end of my career, I started really, I got a lot of clients that were in advanced age. And yeah, it, yes, if you improve your health generally and you're older, you're going to see improvements in age-related, you know, disease and chronic pain, all that stuff. But man, strength training, there was nothing. There was nothing that I could do, like getting them a little stronger, build more muscle that would have more of a positive impact. It was dramatic, the impact that, you know, adding four pounds of muscle on a 65-year-old was like, we would instantly see, mm -hmm. you know, blood sugar better. We would instantly see blood lipids get better, hormone levels better. They'd feel totally different. It just was the incredible. overall look is so different than say somebody who's just been driving the cardio button the whole time too with the oxidative stress and like what that does, you know, to their skin and their youthfulness. Now, how how much of this do you think is attributed to the actual muscle that they end up building, and how much of it is based off the behaviors that they put in place in order to build that muscle? It, right, because if you if you are adding four to 10 pounds of muscle on your body, uh, there's some things that you're doing right. Like you're, you're eating adequate protein. You're probably getting enough rest and recovery. You're lifting weights consistently. So I wonder how much of the, the healthy hormone profile that you see is directly attributed to the actual process of building muscle, or it's also connected to a lot of the behaviors yeah. that are in place in order to do that. It's both, but in there's interesting studies done on, for example, on the severely obese where they'll have them gain a little bit of muscle and you'll see these really wonderful improvements yeah. in insulin point. Uh, resistance. In older men with low testosterone, they give them testosterone shots, right, to get their levels up to uh, a better, you know, healthier, higher range, within range. No, they don't work out. They're not doing anything else. All they did was send a hormone signal to build muscle. And what do you see? You know, reduced risk of diabetes. They gain a little bit of muscle. Um, they start to burn more body fat. You see improved cognition, um, better blood flow, all those different things from the muscle that comes from the testosterone signal. So it's both. It's definitely both. But but as you get older, one of the interesting things that happens that is really starting to now get connected to age-related disease and, and chronic illness is just the loss of muscle, which then is loss of bone. And you see all these terrible effects. So yeah, if you want younger hormone profiles, like to get your body set up to build muscle. As it does it, it, it shifts everything in that direction. I can't think of a more effective single thing you could do that's going to do that for you. Um, that's natural. That doesn't, you know, you don't need to take exogenously or whatever. Um, so, yeah, it's one of those things that nobody talks about really because we, we compare like exercise benefits, different forms of exercise, but the hormone changes that you get from strength training are – Head and shoulders superior to when you compare head to head, right? Mm -hmm. To other forms of exercise. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. How was uh, how was your uh, trip over to Austin? Oh, it was great, man. It was it was really really, really cool. So I went over there uh, on my way to. Obviously, we all went to Florida. Yeah, uh, and I met with uh, Nick Bear. Yeah, Nick Bear, his pot, great guy, great group of people. I had a feeling you were gonna like him. Really, really cool guy. He showed me his warehouse with the you know the company's been crushing and BPN, just right? Podcast. Is that what it's BPN yeah. subs? Mm -hmm. Now, is, he's a big runner guy. So uh, this was the one the one piece training, I yeah. was really interested in because I know he's ultra marathon, he's a marathon guy. Like, so. Oh, no, he's all of it. He started out hardcore bodybuilding. Oh. Yeah. And then he got into some of these, like, not, you know, endurance stuff, but more so it's like testing your will type of stuff. Mm. That's what he likes to do. Mm. Like a Joe DeSena. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny. He told me, so he went and trained for a, a uh, Ironman event and he eliminated strength training completely because he thought that would be help his performance. And he goes, man, this is on his podcast that he'll release where, where he interviewed me. He goes, man, it was weird watching the changes in my body. He goes, I started storing body fat in weird places. Mm. Uh, obviously I was losing muscle. My metabolism was slowing down, even though I was doing so much activity 
training for you know this this Ironman event. And then I got my hormones tested. He goes, my testosterone was in the floor. And he's like, man, I, so he goes, the next one that I trained for, I made sure to incorporate a little bit of strength training just to kind of maintain that. And he said it was, it was totally different. Oh, wow. But anyway, great, great. I mean, re- you ever meet people and you're just like, man, these are like really good. good yeah, really, really good people. That's cool. It was really awesome. That's really cool. And then we went to uh, Florida. To good old sunny state of you Florida. You know, we get asked a lot, right? I think everybody has been has experienced this when you're being interviewed by somebody or we're meeting somebody. And like one of the most common questions I get asked are, you know, what has been the most memorable moment for Mind Pump? And I think that every time that I've answered that question, I think I've shared something different. And it's always like whatever's top of mind for me or like mm-hmm. the last, you know, most recent like, oh, that was so amazing. And there are a lot of memorable moments. Right. That's mm-hmm. what I mean. There's so many of them that we've had that have been amazing and yeah. uh, that, you know, depending on when you ask me what I've been thinking about, I probably have a different answer. I think that for the first time, there'll be a universal answer for all of us from the experience that we had in Florida for quite some time. It'll be interesting how long it will take before that trip, that experience is topped, at least for me. Well, we went to interview Tony Robbins, who, I mean, the guy is probably one of the most, he's one of the most influential people, uh, I guess, in America, and he has been for decades. He's the only common one that we all had. You know that, right? So when we first started the podcast, we all kind of individually made this list, including Doug, of like, all the time. And everybody had like their unique stuff. Like Justin had some rockers on there. I had some athletes on there. Sal had some politicians and yeah. so on. We all had some like random, like Tony Robbins was the single guest that I think each one of us had on their list when we mm-hmm. first started, which is kind of cool that this, that here we are, you know, it, it was a surreal experience. Well, he's a remarkable individual, mm-hmm. so we could talk about that as well. But man, we get to his, his gorgeous home and first of all, very nice guy. I met his staff. Yeah. What was really cool was to see that uh, some of his staff was, big fans of our show, which is probably why we got invited uh, to his home. I'm sure it was uh, his He's a real his, smart trainer. Yeah, and his trainer was a cool yeah. guy, also loved the show. and Everybody was super nice, like really, really good people. And they had nothing but incredible things to say about him, in fact. They kept talking about how he was just like such a genuine, authentic, which is 100% the vibe we all got. I think that we all said that after we left. But we get there, and first of all, he's a great guy, huge presence, not just because he's a physically big dude, but just uh, he's got this energy about him, right? Very warm, makes you feel at home right away. Shows us around a little bit, and then, dude, he takes us in that that garage. <laughs> I did not expect yeah. anything, any of that at yeah. all. Well, we're gonna I, I feel like we were in that other part of the house just so that they could like set this all up. So we had this like crazy experience, which was like just mind blowing. Like it just kind of came out of left field when we walked into that room and saw you know some of his exotic cars, and then all of a sudden he kind of surprised us. Oh, dude, oh, it yeah. was it was it was like we went to Bruce Wayne's house. Yeah, no, like, I <laughs> like I think the best analogy is the uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 it yeah. felt like Willy Wonka, and we, we were like ticket. the kids that yeah. were. We got the golden ticket. We got to come in, and because there's no, I mean, no cameras, right? There's no, no videos of this no. uh, inside inside of his house. And, and we're cool like, talking about. And it, we right? had to, we had to sign all kinds of stuff before we went in there. So they're very, very particular about what you know, taking photos or any videos. So the experience is something that you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know how many total people have got to go in his house like that, but. I know there's there's you can't find anything. And on we could YouTube we could or, talk in detail about what we like some of the stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. Okay. There, I, know, there, I was like waiting. Well, to see well if it's cool. I want to respect his privacy, uh, but so I, I'll tell you a little bit how I experienced. I'm sure all of because you know what it was. It was like you ever do something and then afterwards you're like trying to process everything because it was mm-hmm. so much to. Kinda, there was so much to look at and take in. Dude, it was just like yeah, it was like a whirlwind. So I'll tell you my experience. I would love to hear what you guys you know kind of went through. But we walk into this garage and first of all, there's this priceless Ferrari that is in this garage that none of us even talked about because that's how crazy everything else was. No. Okay? And it was on one of those showroom kind of displays where you could like turn. It's a turntable yeah. that rotates it. it. Rotate so you drive it, it in, yeah. it right, turns around and I don't know what else it does. <laughs> none of us said anything. By the way, no. any other circumstance, I would have been all over this car, well, right? There was. You guys told me there was other cars. I didn't even see them. Oh, yeah. yeah to like the, It just didn't even register. But here, okay, so we walk in, we see this, incre- this incre- but we didn't even talk about the car, nothing, because he walks over. And there's like this metal. It was a submarine door. A hatch. It yeah, looked yeah, like a submarine yeah, door. A hatch, yeah. He pushes a button. The hatch goes up, and there's this blue light and this hole that's in this hatch. Yeah. And he's like, "All right, you got to, you know, follow me or whatever." And he's talking jumps about. Jumps in. And he literally jumps in this hole, and it looks like he slides down and disappears. Yeah. Now I'm like, 
what the hell's going on? <laughs> and knowing, you know, stuff about him, I'm like, am I going to go in and la- and like, are we going to end up in like shark infested waters? Because he's, <laughs> cause he's like, you start a, walking on coals. Yeah, or like, like, coal, oh, like oh, is oh. it going to be something weird where he's yeah. going to like, you know, that get totally us? totally crossed your mind, didn't Bro, it? Bro, I'm like, what is this? What's going on, right? <laughs> I didn't think that at all. Like, like what's yeah. going on? What are we going to yeah. end up in? You know, like, he's going to like, you know, transform us. You know how yeah. he does that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, and he literally, by the way, he's like 60 something year old dude. He just dives in uh, and he's gone. Well, he went for it, dude. He's like, all right, follow me. And he just takes off. So I'm like, uh, uh, okay, so I leap in right after him, and it is one of the fastest slides I've ever been down in my entire life. Yeah, you're like what? And it's way longer than you think. Yeah, yeah. Like, ah, and you're going down in this tube, and you end up in this underground like area that's yeah. just ridiculous. It's an underground mansion. Yeah, that's insane. It's- there was like this indoor basketball court where the lines were made or like set by lasers so you could push yeah. a button it could turn into a squash court it could turn into a basketball court turn into something else there were two bowling alleys you yeah. know there was which uh i gotta say too i think that they put like our names out there like they were anticipating that we were gonna play i know i'm so mad that we Dude, did we only I, had a certain amount I, yeah i, know I am do. and i'm not right so I, that we I wish they, I did, at least they set one. it up so we could play around a little bit but we only had a, we had a very small window with him. I mean, the guy was literally yeah. on TV right before. He was us. on Megan Kelly before us, and then right off to another interview. Right off to afterwards. Yeah, the dude is super super. So, any time that we spent kind of messing around, we would have we would have got less time with getting to talk to him. Yeah. So. That part I, I don't regret not playing around because we would have played around. He'd be like, "Oh, see you guys, see you later, guys." Gotta go. And know? there's so much more about this underground area. Oh, but the then, sports memorabilia oh, was dude. insane. The guy's so he's so influential and connected. And and then we have this. Then there's a stage area, obviously for media, and that's where we sit down to interview him. And then we have you know great conversation with the guy. So part of the reason why I think that we all had such an amazing experience is that, and we talk more about this off air than I, although we've shared a little bit on air is a lot of times uh, the people that we get to meet, um, we're, we're super excited to meet them um, because of whatever they've done, whatever accolades, whatever book they've done or whatever stuff they've done, the inventor or writer or famous actor, whatever that we get to meet. And then you meet them, and it's such a letdown. Um, a lot of times, which I get, right? Because you blow people up in your head, right? Yeah, when you don't know. Them yeah, it's partially our fault, and it's also partially that's kind of what you see in celebrities many times is they have this persona that they've yeah. created for themselves, mm-hmm. or they've manufactured somehow. Um, and then you meet them, and they're just it doesn't really align with what you thought, right? Yes. And so I think we all kind of go, we're all a little jaded because of that. So when we when we go into meeting him, or we're all kind of like, well, we'll see, you know, we'll yeah. see if he's not this, you know, big old dude that, you know, puts on a facade like he's full of energy and positive and, you know, authentic. And then we'll meet him and we'll, no. and he, I think exceeded, he, yeah, exceeded I think, all those. Yeah. Like he totally exceeded what I, what I would have uh, imagined. The guy is just, he's, his presence is very, very, I mean, you can see why for decades this guy's been, so influ- you know what's crazy, and I told this story on our interview with him. On the flight there, so serendipitous, I sit next to a sixty-something-year-old dude mm-hmm. who literally sold his billion-dollar company. Talked about how you know and we were talking about his success, and he asked me what I was doing on this plane, where, you know, why I was going to Florida. Mm-hmm. I said, "Oh, I'm interviewing Tony Rod- Robbins," and he goes, "Dude, he goes, when I was 26, he goes, I was on the wrong path, man. He goes, and I bought some of Tony Robbins' video cassettes, VHS, and it changed my life, and it's what brought me here today." I'm like, what? Yeah. The, like, talk about like who has this kind of impact on people? And I've Dude, heard stories like that. There's so many of those stories. I mean, I had a few I was going to try and bring up, but you try and get a word in, you know, when yeah. he's going was impossible. But uh, yeah, I mean, like the way I ran my business was indirectly because of my friend that went through his course and, and just thought completely differently about it and uh, was able to kind of realize his value and then charge yeah. more money. And then in fact, you know, inspired me to go with that business model and so it's just like the trickling effect. He's been able to, you know, really help so many people out there. Yeah, his, his philanthropy really blew me away. Insane the amount of giving that he does and how many people helps. And he was talking about how that makes him feel, you know, really good and happy and how it comes back to him and all that stuff. But it's very authentic because you could tell that that's what brings him you yeah. know, joy, that that's why he enjoys being successful is so he can do that. And you can tell, you know, you can tell, you can tell a lot about someone by the people that, they surround themselves with. Mm-hmm. And when we met his team, because we went to a, when we first got there, we had to wait for him, right? He was still doing his Megan Kelly interview and we're in this like guest house. 
uh, and which is, by the way, a gorgeous house by itself. Yeah, but we're in there. <laughs> this guest house is bigger and nicer than my house. Yeah, it's really nice. <laughs> yeah, dude. But we're over there, and it's gorgeous. And you know, we're sitting there waiting, and then his staff comes in to meet us and mic us up. And the way they talked about him, you know, you could tell like he's. It wasn't just like this is my boss, and I got to beat whatever. They were saying some really, really nice things about oh, him. Oh, yeah. That's you how know? you can really tell is the way other people talk about him. You yeah. Know what I'm so he was, yeah, no, he exceeded, I think, my expectations. But it was one sure. of those things I was like, I'm, I was processing for a few days afterwards. I'm like, did I actually it, see no, this? And did it still I hasn't, it still hasn't like completely set in, I think. I mean, so, okay, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the old show, The uh, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. I love, I I've seen that. every episode of that. I've seen every episode of MTV, MTV Cribs. MTV Cribs. Yeah. So that I just I've always been into that stuff. So the experience of going into a house like that, I, I mean, I doubt I'll ever experience anything else like that in my lifetime. And to get the full picture of this is a it's a fifteen thousand square foot mansion on Palm Beach, right? So when you first walk in, it's you know he's and when you walk through this this big entryway, you've got these floor to ceiling windows facing the infinity pool that goes out into the ocean on Palm Beach. And then the thing that we're, the room we're talking about, this underground, I mean, this is an underground mansion. It's another 10,000 square feet yeah. with also, so it's not like you go down underground and it's like this, I, you, most people like are- Like a little like, cave. Yeah, I would, and, and, you know, picture these like small- Right, and like low ceilings. Yeah, you got like still, again, 24 foot tall ceilings underground. Well, bro, you go so down that slide for like 10 seconds yeah, to get yeah. there. So it, it, it's- Well, did you see too from the house to there, like it was, we were walking back to the house, we're like, oh yeah, you guys started out here and then like went all the way over basically underneath that part of yeah. the house. I was like, whoa, that was far. And I imagine there, I think it was Doug and I were talking about this, that there's probably laws around, you know, he can't build up. So when he bought that mansion, he probably couldn't add higher because you're on the ocean. So I imagine you, there's laws that protect- yeah people from building a, the view obstructing the view for other people so his only option was probably to go down and to build something that big underground and then of course to have a you know submarine trap door with a slide to lead you to it like it's <laughs> dude like the little was, kid in me 100 cool, i felt like i was you know 14 years old yeah. like you know thinking about like my dream yeah. you know underground cave man cave that i would build but like, you know, you had know everything you know it's really uh cool though is when i told him the story about the guy i sat next to in the plane i could tell he got moved by it so that felt very authentic and then when he talked about his work like he's he's on his on the way to feeding over a billion people through some of his charity work mm -hmm. and when he would talk about the philanthropy stuff that's when he would light up the most you could see that's when he felt the most like alive like this is why this is what i really love to do and that really, uh, I mean, I, I I felt that. I yeah, he's that on really cool. he's on pace right now to feed a, a billion, billion people. A billion people. Yeah. Yeah, like just amazing. let that sink in a minute. Like to what you would what how much money it would take to feed a billion people? It's that's insane. That's wild. Yeah, dude. it's totally it's totally crazy. I didn't know that his la the, the last three books, including the Life Force, which is the one that we went there to kind of talk to him about, uh, all the proceeds are completely donated. Yeah, yeah, he's just, he's using it. He, he, writes them and then what he makes off of them is Which, what he uses to the thing that's crazy to me about that is like and that just proves your point about how motivated and driven he is to to give and to help others is this dude is like on a grind and a hustle to get the word out i mean i've seen him all over all your biggest podcasts yeah. and tv shows and to think that he's not it's not coming back in his pocket and he's grinding and hustling like that to push it as much as he possibly yeah, can it says a lot. yeah it says a lot about his character yeah for sure. really really cool but I, I, sorry i couldn't stay as long uh, oh i know we miss you, you dude yeah. i had to go we, a, day we had a good early. old time in the sun so and the beach what'd you guys do the day i left you guys so we, we kind of hung out there a bit longer uh, and we're just having some nice drinks. I went in the ocean a few times. And so Adam was like uh, adamant about like ordering this banana drink. And so it was like some banana daiquiri or whatever. And then he's like trying to remember. He said something about like when you're in Jamaica, you had a very specific drink. And he's like, here, dude, order this drink for me. It's, uh, it's called Dirty Banana. And I'm just like. What a dirty banana! I'm like, I am not ordering that. <laughs> I'm not ordering that, dude. That's a total setup. <laughs> so you got, hey on man, it? give me a dirty banana. No, like, it wasn't. Like he wouldn't even order it because I'm like, just order it. So I ordered it. What is it? Bro, it's, it's like, I don't know exactly what's. That. I mean, Justin would know better than me what's inside these drinks. Like, it's it's a drink in Jamaica. It's really popular, and it's and I think it's called a dirty banana, and it's basically just like a banana daiquiri. I mean, it's like oh, so it's not a it's not a prank. 
No, it wasn't a prank at all. No. Like oh, I, so I, just, I haven't heard that, of what it. What was funny about it was Justin was so resistant to like doing it. He <laughs> thought I was setting him up, and I'm like, no, bro, it's really a good drink. Yeah. I said, I don't know if they have it here. I said it's really, and so we asked the guy, and he he based. I know there's something. Yeah, I was like, yeah. Also, can you get me a rusty trombone? Yeah, you know, and, and, and yeah. on yeah. the rocks. Can you give Doug a dirty yeah. Sanchez? He exactly. Likes those, dirty Sanchez. It's a fuzzy Wombler. Yeah. Uh, oh, does it actually it. have the breakdown? What's in it, Doug? Yeah. So you got white rum, Kahlua, banana flavor, flavored liqueur, uh, light cream, whole milk, one banana. And uh, put a cherry a, on it. A cherry Ooh, on that top. sounds like yeah. candy. It's good. That it's, sounds like it's I did not try it, unfortunately. I should you have. So you're having it, right, Justin? Uh, I had a banana one. I didn't have the dirty banana. Mm. Yeah, oh, you so. didn't have the one that uh, you didn't drink? I, yeah, I had the other one, the first one you got. He likes yeah. clean bananas. Yeah, I like oh. the clean I don't like getting it dirty. So no, 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 no. He didn't know that. The guy didn't know the name. He just said, like, I can make you a banana type daiquiri. And I said, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, that's cool. So you guys just hung out and got nice sun and relaxed and all that stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we did that. And then we went to a really nice dinner that night. So, yeah. yeah we had a steak guys. at um, <laughs> yeah, dude, we kinda the meat market. Is that the name of it, Doug? The meat market, yeah. Yeah, shout, I wish I remember the person, you know, who uh, slid in the DMs and sent oh. me places Great Someone, recommendation. Yeah, there was a guy that was a, a local guy. Um, and I apologize for not remembering your Instagram handle, but he, you know, DM me saying like, "Hey, I hope you enjoy my town." And if you want well, have any questions, I said, "Well, actually, I'm sure one night we'll go out and have a nice dinner. Do you have a good steak place?" And so he listed a couple of them, and we went to this one. Was that it was legit? Way legit. Oh, so I didn't even know. So, so I didn't so know good, this ex dude. existed right here. So Doug was kind of schooling us on. So I, I always thought that, you know, once you hit Wagyu, it, that's it. Like, it doesn't get any crazier than that. But then there's Japanese Wagyu yeah, that's rated like... Wagyu. So I had an A5 Japanese Wagyu steak. So how much did I pay for your steak? Yeah, so was, this is a company. Yeah, yeah. let's yeah. not talk about how much it was. <laughs> <laughs> it, was uh, it was definitely one of the most expensive steaks that I've ever had. And so it, I've tasted... It, I've had little bits of it. Like, the, the uh, I, there's a steakhouse over here in Cupertino, and they, they were... I don't remember. It was like a small sample of it that you could buy. And it was like butter. It was like, like it melts, yeah. right? Justin yep. had the Justin had the filet, and Doug and I had the ribeye of the the Japanese five wagyu, and it was it was the best steak I ever had. Unbelievable! Is this where they feed the 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 cows beer and they massage they them? Massage the them. They give yeah, them that's like my understanding of the process. Yeah. So typically, you think of it as Kobe beef. But yeah, the A5 Japanese version is different from the A5 American version. Yeah. So okay, uh, so explain to me, Doug. It goes. Kobe Wagyu, Japanese Wagyu? You know, honestly, I don't know all the distinctions. Oh, okay. So Kobe beef is typically, Wagyu means just basically Japanese beef. Okay. Yeah. And the Kobe beef is what's known to be so tender because of the process that they use. It's to, like marbled differently, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, if you look at a piece of Wagyu meat, it's like, it's just like, uh, such a symmetrical it's like fat. It's dispersed it, throughout it's, it. Yeah. yeah. And there's so much fat that it's almost pinkish mm. because of the red juxtaposed Damn, against the white good. but because it's so thin you don't get like that like you know when you get like a ribeye sometimes it has like Big a quarter of inch of fat all the way around the edge you know and it's like really fatty it's so thin that you never feel like you're eating it's all fat. in there yeah. Yeah. it's all yes yeah, all dispersed throughout the meat oh, rather than in big chunks you know, oh, down the side, yeah, or give you a little bit of salt delicious. to pinch on it. You would, oh. yeah, you would have. Yeah, I would have liked it, but I, there was no way I would have missed the because this the the reason why I came back early was it was the father daughter dance that we do every year. I do every oh, year right. with my daughter. Now they didn't do a dance, so uh, no way I'll miss that. Right? There's only one year that I missed that. That was the year I, I took her to Disneyland because I uh -huh. missed it <laughs> and had to make that was up. The first year of Mind Pump, wasn't it? Yeah, I think right. so, or second, right? So I uh, obviously I came home early. The next day was that. Now, they didn't do a dance this year, um, and I'm assuming it's because of whatever, COVID or whatever. So they did a father-daughter adventure, but it was kind of like a scavenger hunt. Mm. And so it was competitive? Well, it wasn't supposed to be, right? You're supposed <laughs> to show up. It always turns into that. Well, it, so we're supposed to... Sh My daughter is a beast. Like, she's so competitive. I totally love it. So we, t we talked about this, and I said, hey, we're supposed to show up. They give us instructions. We do certain things, take pictures, apparently. And then we come back and we get a prize. And she's like, let's be first. And I mean, my heart is just, <laughs> let's be first. My heart just warms let's up. Let's be the best dad. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man, I love this girl. So I'm like, let's do it. So we get there. We show up. We do the thing. We show up. We cry. I, apparently, we blew everyone away with it. And I, now, I, now, truth be told, yeah. I don't think Whoops. anybody else was trying to win or be first. <laughs> but my, we, my daughter definitely wanted to. <laughs> so we did that. And then later that night, I took her to her first 
really quote unquote fancy restaurant, which was really fun, right? So she's 12. Nice. And we, I, I said, you know, get a nice dress. So her mom bought a, a real nice dress for her or whatever, which by the way, she's at the age now where it's like the teen kind of mm. clothes, right? So she had this really pretty dress on, but she wore a cardigan because the back was like straps or whatever. Uh-huh. So I'm already like, I'm inside of me like, damn it. Like my daughter's getting the age yeah, where yeah, yeah. I'm going to- What's start- happening? No. Yeah. But anyway, I pick her, I bought her flowers. I buy her flowers every time and I open the door. I make sure to, like I said, the whole goal with this is to set the standard so high that douchebags right. just don't even get in the door. They're not yeah. even close. Not even close, right? So do the whole thing, flowers, open doors for her. First time she's ever been to a restaurant like this. So we walk in. And right away they hand us this like, uh, you know, oh here's some you know special bone broth or whatever. It's like the whole thing already, right? So yeah. she's taking. She's like, what's this? I said, oh, they just give you this when you first come in or whatever. Then they lead us back, and then there's this big window. It's at uh, Bisteca in um, in the Prune Yard, great oh. restaurant. So you see like all the chefs and stuff cooking. So she's like immediately taking videos of everything, you know. Then we sit down, and she's you could tell she's like, this is she's like this place is really fancy. I said, oh, it's really cool, right? Then she's commenting on everything. She's like, they take our silverware between every dish. Like, why are they doing that? I'm like, oh, this is kind of what they do. And then she goes to the bathroom at one point, comes back. She's like, they folded my napkin. I said, I don't know, right? It's pretty cool. <laughs> she tried everything, which she's not, uh, you know, she's a kid, right? Now, but now she's getting a little older. But, you know, kids, they don't want to try everything. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, they want their thing. Well, she totally was down. So she, we ordered all kinds of different things. And although she didn't, you know, eat a lot of everything, she actually tried everything, which was really cool. So that was fun, taking videos and pictures. And then the waiter, one of the waiters came up and he's like, hey, man, are you taking your daughter on a date? He's like, that's so cool, you know? So, and it was cool because I was in front of my daughter. So I, you know, she got to see that. But we had a blast, man. We had a, a lot of fun, took her home. And so, yeah, I, I wouldn't have missed that for the world. So, yeah, it would have been fun to stay with you guys, but yeah. no, I get it. no yeah, way in hell I would have missed that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. No way in hell I would have missed so that. So, what, what, I mean, the scavenger hunt, like, how does, it, how does it work? I mean, I know what a scavenger hunt is, but what do you guys. They called it an adventure, but basically it was like, go to this address. Take a picture with this thing, do this one thing. So driving like places, yeah, yeah. Oh, kind yeah. Of stuff. yeah. So it was yeah. like through the town. It was a scavenger. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was cool. It was yeah. fun, you know. But like I said, my daughter's like so competitive. She's like, do this, just do that. Okay, which one's closer? We'll go to that one first. She's like, Your speeding habits probably help for this oh. one. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drive fast. Yeah. What are you talking about? Uh, speaking of fast stuff, huh? Looks like uh, I got quickly booted off Instagram. Never Dude. just done. Man, it really interesting. Ghosted. You know, I, I've heard some people though that go through this and it takes a while sometimes like i i mean my optimistic brain says you know some algorithm thing got tripped uh because of something you've did or people reporting you or some shit and then they have to kind of fact check and figure it all out and then you'll get it back hopefully well so i got a message so here's what happened i go to good on instagram i get a message and it says there's suspicious activity or whatever we need to verify that you're that this is you so i did because i have this verification where they send me a code i send it in whatever and then it said, uh, we'll let you know within roughly 24 hours if mm. you're verified or whatever. Well, anyway, that was over a week ago. Yeah, I was going to say, how many days has it been yeah. since? And now leading up to this, I will say this. I was getting, and I don't know what Instagram is doing with their algorithm. I was getting warnings on memes. First mm-hmm. of all, I post memes in the story. They disappear after 24 hours, right? Right. I was getting warnings on memes that I posted two years ago. Yeah. I would oh, get- Oh, really? Yeah. They would show, oh, this meme went against our community guidelines. I'm like, dude, I posted that two years ago. Yeah. And it was for stupid stuff. It was like silly, like this one meme or this this guy, it was like a funny meme and the guy's like, oh, I'm going to kill myself. It's like, you should not post self-harm, you know, yeah. suicide, whatever. I'm like, what? Like, this is silly. Like, it was dumb. Anyway, it, that led up to, and then on other stuff, I had been getting- uh, accounts that were copying me exactly. They mm-hmm. would just change one letter. Yeah, I got that right now. And you, yeah, so someone's after us, bro. I think you're next. Yeah, I don't know if they're out. I mean, what I see with the copying us is once, uh, I mean, it's really popular right now, the scams online, especially with the whole NFT. Yeah, it's all the crypto uh, Yeah, the crypt. Right yeah, now. everyone's making so much money off crypto and you got all these people that have FOMO and then they find someone like us who have... Because it, it, obviously there's much bigger accounts that you can copy this, but I think what's most tempting about our accounts is how uh, our community, how active our community yeah. is. So we're, the engagement on our pages are is really high. And so I think you get these, these scam artists that see that 
and they copy all of our photos and pictures. They change like they change the I to an L, right? Lowercase yeah. L. Yep. So they it, do the like, exact same thing. To at me. first glance, it looks literally spot on. And they copy mind. all your posts, all your pictures. Yeah. Everything. So it's a. And then what they do is they convince. They start following some of the people that are following you, and, then and they then DM they, them like, "Oh, I got this great, you know, investment opportunity or some." Yeah. yeah. Now, luckily, I didn't get anybody that's a follower that told me they got scammed. Most people kind of laughed it off and said like, yeah. "Oh, I got so excited because you followed me this morning and then found out yeah. it wasn't." you so i hadn't got anybody tell me like they they bid yeah, on how it. much does that even work uh and this kind of leads me into like so the the crypto stuff like so there was a commercial for the super bowl oh yeah was that clever. was really annoying so it was like they they tried to make it you know how you had a screensaver oh, a long Coinbase. time ago where it's like ding yeah, i read about going the, across the, QR the screen the, yeah. yeah the qr code you know that crashed their site did it? It got. It was so effective that it crashed their. Side. I was yeah. wondering how effective it was going to be because I did. I was curious enough to like see where it led. And Hell like, of people oh, did that. Of course, it's a crypto. Yep. Yeah. No. I so I did a thing. I don't know if you guys saw my story, but I asked everybody to DM me their favorite commercials as they were coming in or what like that. That was one of the top ones. Was everyone thought that was was really clever? That's one of those things that will work once. You, oh yeah. No one oh, else yeah. Can do it again. If you saw it again, you'd be like, dude. No. How frustrated would you be if you're the CEO of Coinbase? You did that. It was, but then your shit crashed. It was so effective. Yeah. Video. Oh, uh, I would be so. You can't capture all those leads coming in. I That's would be brutal. So pissed off. Now, did you did you watch? Did you watch commercials and stuff of like that? No. I watched stuff about it. You know, I don't give a crap about yeah. the Super Bowl. <laughs> but I watched stuff all about the sports ball. The Super so did Bowl. you so you didn't catch all the commercials the, the Amazon no. one I thought was really good. Uh Jeff Bezos put it on his Instagram like a like a week before or whatever. So I kind of got this I already knew it was coming. Um, but I think it was one of the better ones. It was like uh, the what's not Siri what's their they're not Siri, they're uh, what's Amazon's uh, oh, Echo. Alexa. Alexa. Alexa Alexa, thank you. Uh, is uh, learns to predict what you're thinking. Uh, and so it's this like commercial with husband and wife and they're oh, like oh that was pretty yeah good. it was yeah. pretty funny so it had the and it starts off like the the predictive said, capability is really great it's like yeah. oh something spilled or before something happened it already Alexa ordering yeah. paper towel or some shit like that right so it was like really quick they're all eating oysters and it said something like you know uh, that uh they were, they were blaming the guy that like, he left them out overnight if it tastes yeah, weird. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's like, Pleh. so it started getting really funny because it was like husband and wife. Like, you know, the husband would be telling the story and then it'd be what, what the wife was really thinking. All of a sudden, Alexa would like turn on the blender. You know what I'm saying? So he could hear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That so, was close. Or like the, the wife really wanted him to like be somewhere. She had a special thing that was coming up and it was like fake your death. But like that. So it was, it was pretty, pretty, that good. was clever. I thought all that I, was really all good. I saw, because I saw stuff about it and they the, were all kind of mediocre. The thing that year. I noticed, because well, it was in California, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I was like, wow, look at all these SoFi Stadium. incredible celebrities wow, yeah. not wearing masks in the state that requires masks for everybody, <laughs> except for the orchestra. The orchestra had to wear masks. So I guess I guess if you make enough money and you're popular enough, you don't got to do... Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Magi my kids magically, to, like some of the mask mandates like were lifted just a couple days before. Except for my kids. They went yeah, to school today. Except for San Well, we're, as I say, California's... The, the rest, there's a there's a ton of blue states now that are dropping it. Like, there, I think... Washington, D.C. just announced... Yeah, I read like five or seven just over the last couple of days are, are starting to drop it. So California's kind of the last to get on yeah. board with this. Yeah, uh, we're, we're real progress, you know, forward. I was so... I was, yeah, I was so infuriated. I watch these people hanging out right next to each other, whatever, no problem. I still got to put a mask on my damn kid. I'm just over it. Oh, totally. I'm, I'm over it on both sides of it. Everybody like, is, dude. I feel Let's like move on. that's why I think you see this. I think you feel, it, here's the thing, even the people that were It's extreme, the same lizard people that kicked me off Instagram, Justin. <laughs> The Damn people no, that dude. were extreme about it, even they are like over it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think they're over the wearing the mask in, in ridiculous places like that or when you're outdoors. So I think that, that and and I, they don't want to talk about it, right? Nobody wants to admit that they were way off on it and were wrong about it. So mm -hmm. you got those people that are just going to be like, oh shit, I kind of yeah. double, triple down on that. And it's uh, not looking like that's how yeah, it played whoopsie. out. You know? Yeah. Do you guys, so you guys, uh, did you guys adjust to the time change yet? Or when did you guys get back? Was uh, Yes, yeah, so we got back late Saturday night. Um, and I definitely woke up early. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I hate yeah, that. I was like, oh, wow. It's like six o'clock. I hate that. But Damn you guys it. were okay today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you guys do anything yesterday or just chill? I'd chill. We went to the beach. Went to the beach and kind of hung out. It was beautiful. The, the You know, of course. The, it was like 80 degrees here. Yeah, we the gone. week that we were gone was like some of the best weather at my place. So Katrina was texting me, it's 80 here. It's 80. You know? So we went up to Half Moon Bay, uh, kind of up in that direction a little yeah. bit. My, my brother had his son's baptism, which was really cool. And it was gorgeous. Now, every once in a while, fog, because we were near the beach. 
fog would roll in and literally the cha- the temperature change would be like 10 degrees. It'd yeah. go like 75, 65. Within that's, like, five. that's like my place. Yeah. My place is like on a peninsula, yeah. so it like does that. Yeah. So like it'll be warm. And you know what's cool, cool though? So we were there, family was there hanging out. It was a good time. And my dad, uh, my brother and I took a picture with my dad and my dad is just, you could see the pride in his face, you know, because it's my, my brother's first child, right? And yeah. I already have kids and there's a picture with me and we'll, po- we'll, we'll I'll make sure to give it to Andrew here to put on the video so you guys can see it. My dad is in between my brother and I, and you could just see the, the pride in this, you know, this, this poor immigrant who came here, who this was his dream, you know, to see this with his kids. And it was really nice. You know, I could see my dad just, he was, he's not a super emotional, but he's a very loving person. Yeah. But I could see the the look in his face when we were doing that. And I had my grandparents there who were That's cool. Yeah, it was really nice. And then we got all the all these babies together. So I have my son who's sixteen months old. My cousin's baby is like a year old. My brother's baby's like, you know, right around, you know, that day or a little younger. And we got these little boys together and it's like, Oh man, well, this is so cool. These they're all gonna grow up together and, you know, be real close like wow. we were, you know, growing up. That's awesome. Yeah, I see you keep nice. getting uh you're getting all kinds of stuff shipped to you personally. What do you got going on over oh, yeah. here? Hustling so- on the backside or what, dude? <laughs> no, no. Addressed. Yeah. Every South time I see a box coming, no. yeah, for okay. Sal. For Sal. As soon as I get kicked off Instagram, it's like I'm a cool now. People yeah. are sending me free shit. <laughs> <laughs> stuff. So, no, that's not what happened. So mysterious. No, I'm working with uh so I got in a phone call with Organify because they were talking about they wanted to create a new product and they wanted my input. Can't talk about what the product's going to be or what that's going to look like. But the process by which we talk about what to do and what that's going to look like, like they, they're great, man. They're so... So are they already sending you samples? Yeah, I got a sample. Oh shit, that was fast. Yeah, I got a sample of what we're going to try. I'm, I'm going to give you guys some too. Yeah. But they're what goes into, for example, the protein powder, like they're very conscious about combining vegan sources to give you a beneficial amino acid profile, digestibility, Obviously, taste is really important because vegan proteins t- typically taste like crap. There's obviously mm-hmm. you guys know already taste really good, but I was on the I was on the the a Zoom call with one of the people that develops it, like one of the marketing people, somebody who knows some of the science of the you know the ingredients, and it was yeah. And this was their idea to approach you know us for input on a product, which is amazing. Yeah, but it's I mean obviously we've been working with them for a long time. Yeah, it's great to work with a company that is um, you know like, conscious like that and smart because the supplement industry. Definitely has some good companies that are like that. And then there's a lot of crap. There's, just, there's yeah. so much crap and garbage. Snake oil out there. We must say no to 50 supplement companies a month at, at least because they'll send us a product. I'll, we'll just look at the label and I'll immediately go, you know, no. Do you think that? Do you think that's because of how easy it is to get into that market? Because 100%. there's no regulation around it. And yes. so like it's literally, you could, you know, put 40, you know, 100 bottles together and throw a logo on it and, totally. and like legally start selling to people. First off, it's the reason why we have so many incredible uh, options in the supplement industry. Why it's, okay, I'll give you guys a, a great example. Creatine would not be here if the supplement industry was not as unregulated as it is. Creatine got developed in the in the mid 90s or, or put out in the market in the mid 90s. Today, and I, how many times have I said on the show, that creatine is I was going. Just going to ask if you're going to bring up the yes. article you sent because yes. you've been saying that for a long time. I've been saying it for years, right? Probably for, since we started the podcast. That creatine is going to be known as one of the number one health and wellness supplements. Forget building muscle, forget strength. It's great for those things too. Health and wellness. Well, there's this huge, uh, I guess, convention event with scientists and doctors who are going to be presenting their coming up. It's gonna, they're going to be presenting their studies on creatine's beneficial effects for health. Cancer, Alzheimer's, uh, arthritis, you know, uh, diabetes, Parkinson's, like you name it, right? Why? Because creatine contributes to mitochondrial health and it helps fuel the energy of all your cells. Mm -hmm. So this supplement, which is funny because I remember the 90s, creatine was like, because it actually worked, Oh, you shouldn't take creatine. It's yeah. a steroid. It's bad for you, whatever. There's lots of misinformation they're putting out to yes. try and deter everybody. Yeah, but this is a good example, right? Supplement industry is unregulated, so you're going to get a lot of crap, but you're also going to get way more opportunities and stuff presented. So you just have to be more of a responsible consumer. That's all That's all it means, that you have to make your own choices. And there are good uh, companies out there, like we talked about, like Organifi. There's a lot of shit that's out there. So you just got to be smart about, you know, what you pick. Yeah. So I, you know, but definitely because the barrier is low, that's why you see a lot of these companies that can put out whatever they want. Justin, did you watch the Super Bowl? 
Yeah, I watched it like fully, or did you? Like- I mean, yeah, it was on the whole time. I didn't like. I wasn't paying too much attention because my team wasn't there, and like, I hate the Rams. So, oh, who? who so who was won. it? Rams, Rams and, and Bengals. Who it was won? actually a really good game. It was a good game. Yeah, I mean, was- they kept it close. It was back and forth, but uh, I just, I mean. Again, unless you're like a fan of of those two teams, I think it's kind of like whatever. So, any guesses from you? You know, I I was like diving into like the how much money these guys make off of stuff like this, right? So, mm-hmm. by the way, did you bet on it? By the way, I didn't actually. Oh, really? I chose oh, not. Surprised. I had so many people asking to what my take on, it, and I'm glad I did because I I said that I believe the Rams are going to win. I hate to. I would hate to bet against Joe Burrow. The line was uh, um, Bengals plus four. Okay, so that means that the Bengals get four extra points. Okay, they lost by three. Ooh. So I mean, that's when it's that close on the line. It's a, it's always it's a yeah, it's a fifty fifty shot. You which way you could have bet would have wow. won. Now, right how there. if had you would have bet and be honest, where would you have put your money? the Rams? But oh. I would have lost because I would have taken the I would so I don't bet the money line. I like to take the points. Okay. Um, so I would have taken the Rams minus three, which means the Rams would need to win by four or more for me to have won. So I would have lost. Wow. So okay. I so I'm glad I stayed away from it because it, and that's partly why I did. I knew the I knew the Bengals were going to put up a fight, and a lot of the a lot of the money in Vegas was on the Bengals. Yeah. Well, so, it was interesting. There was no penalties like the whole game, and then all of a sudden, like the last drive, you know, one of the last drives down there, there's all these flags. Yeah, flying. my my buddies and I were getting into it a little bit it about that because one of my one of my buddies was really rooting for the Bengals. I didn't really have any skin in the game, and so I didn't care which way. I just wanted a good game. Um, and you're right. There was like literally like two penalties the whole game. And then all of a sudden there was like six uh, yeah. at the, the right there in the red zone. Right in the red zone. Now, you know, a lot of them were. I mean, you saw the replay. They I were mean, grabbing. it did happen, right? There was yeah, there was some holding, and then there was you know some hands and whatnot. But it just was they didn't call that before. So it was just yeah. So, but I mean, I I guess I didn't see how egregious it was before, so I don't yeah. know. Um, but of course, if you're a Bengals fan, that's your your biggest gripe right now is everybody was talking about that. Totally. Uh, I thought they were fair call. I thought they were fair calls. Um, it does suck that they are making them at the very end like that. So you know, the, I don't know if you saw the replay. On the very last play, where Aaron Donald come in and basically sacked him, even though he got it off, but he pretty much sacked him for the win. Mm-hmm. They show uh, there's a, there's actually a, the camera's frozen on Chase, yeah. his number one wide receiver. Actually, uh, Ramsey, who's guarding him, fell down and he was gone, He's wide open. Wide open. Wow. And if he had literally Yay. a half a second more, that ball's gone and they're they're. I scoring thought he goal. almost even got it off to. Uh, yeah, it was, it was the running back that was close, and he just like flicked it as he's getting tackled. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's do this. So let's Anyways. play this game a little bit. We'll see if you guys guess. Right. Okay, so. Uh, I, I I don't know these facts, but this is me kind of estimating based off. Are you of, ask sports questions? No, 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 dollars, okay. money. Like <laughs> okay. how much all money? Right. How much do you think? First of all, do you have any idea what the average ticket would cost? With the low end, the high end, do you have any idea? Oh, to go to go. What's the low? What's the cheapest? Uh, like would, nosebleed, worst seats now, in the house. I would imagine because would the thousand. prices of everything is exploded that this has to be one of the most expensive Super Bowl. So am I right that's, about yeah, that? Yeah, that's what sent me down this path. Was okay. exactly that. Was that because What's I was the blown a, five or ten thousand? No, not that for a nosebleed <laughs> for one seat. <laughs> I, don't know, I no. mean, it was four thousand. So that was mind boggling to me, right? To know that the the worst seat in the yeah, house four thousand dollars. Yeah, like forty two hundred. I threw that out there as a joke. Yeah, no, four wow. th- per seat, right? So if you and your wife for going to the Super Bowl and want the worst seats in the house, you're spending eight G's. How just, much are the best seats? Damn. Oh, best seats would go up where I think the highest was thirty five thousand. So the so the the average is like eight thousand. So that stadium seats seventy thousand people for regular seats. They say there's like twenty to thirty thousand with standing room only and other things. So I'm not I can't guarantee exactly how many other tickets are sold besides the seventy thousand seats. But of course those were sold out. So you know how much money that is. Hmm. You did the math, obviously. Of course so I did. How much? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> almost a billion fucking dollars. Wow. Uh, I wonder what the profit. So is if on it was, that. if if they if they actually did a hundred thousand seats or a hundred thousand tickets at an average ticket price of eight thousand, which is what the average, the last two Super Bowls, the average ticket. This is higher. Average ticket price was between seven and eight thousand dollars. So you're talking about seven hundred to eight hundred thousand dollars. Now, if you said only the seventy thousand got, and then there was no other tickets, but I don't believe that's true. Uh, you're talking about five hundred sixty thousand. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. You said a billion dollars. You're talking half about- a billion. I said. Oh, oh. I said almost eight hundred, eight hundred million. Oh, million. You yeah, said eight hundred thousand. Okay. Oh, I, sorry. Yeah, yeah. eight hundred million. Holy Toledo. Eight hundred million now, now dollars. Does this factor into Gavin Newsom's uh, numbers for how much money California's making? <laughs> yeah, that's a pandemic. Qu- that's actually uh, a good question. I don't know. I mean, if you factor in. Um, 
food, beverage, all the things like that. So it's that I didn't realize that's a billion dollars. What was the hot dog cost of the Super Bowl? <laughs> a lot. Twenty bucks? Yeah. No, not that much, but a lot. Probably like eight. I think like eight bucks. I would $8? be surprised if it was twenty bucks. Well, it was okay. So I take that back. Eight dollars is kind of a typical hot dog at a game. You're so. spending four thousand dollars on nosebleed. I, I would imagine the hot dog is going to be like twenty bucks. No, that's a good guess. But I mean, if you add, if you factor in like that plus the tickets, I mean, you're talking about a billion dollar day of of Dude, money right there. That's insane. Just that in itself. Didn't you? Now, is it true that the day after is like the busiest day for plumbers? What? I've heard that. Is that true? I, I, I've that read that like before. That was like a fun fact I read somewhere. Are you serious? That's yeah, so cause, funny. Because all the shits everybody's taking? Yeah, yeah. dude. <laughs> all the junk food and stuff? Yeah, everybody's just running to the bathroom and You got to look that up, Doug. Is that, a, is that a true stat? I've that's, heard it before. I don't know if it's real, if that's just a myth. But it makes sense. Kind I of didn't. I, I would think it'd be Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving. But no, I, I've heard it's a Super Bowl. I, I actually haven't been to a Super Bowl yet. And um, and I don't think I ever, I don't know if I ever will. I, I That's just, the, to me, it's a you lot. You will, dude. Bucket list. Dude, I'm going. Maybe, dude. So yeah. I'm not, I mean, $4,000 seats is, is expensive seats. Now, I've paid that for basketball before. But I'm like on on the court. You know what I'm saying? You yeah, because when you're way yeah, up, it's the, the biggest watching. party uh, there is. You know, the Super Bowl. Like that's yeah. that's yeah. where it's at. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Hey, hey, did you guys hear the the? Uh, this is gonna be a crazy left here, but you guys hear the the news around the advancements in fusion for energy? Yes, no. I, the all in podcast guys were talking about it. So, oh, that's what you guys so yeah, doing. they're making some pretty incredible advancements. Where oh, it is the day after Thanksgiving. Look at that. That is the busiest. Oh, See, that makes more sense. Okay. That makes more sense because okay. you know I I know Thanksgiving what that's all about. Anyway, oh, that's funny. It's uh, all about volume what they're what they're literally tr doing what they're trying to do is literally create mini suns in terms of the energy production and fusion is so, this what that because i remember reading about um china having like a dude, an artificial sun isn't it making. isn't it in the 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 you know this the new wall street yeah with uh, shia LaBeau? okay isn't that what isn't that the water fusion isn't that basically what what they're i think so yeah i think so, so too so literally what this what the promise is and we will get there because the tech it, it'll happen yeah we're going to get to the point where we can create an energy machine that creates more energy than it is that requires going in. Okay. So in other words, we put in so much energy to create more energy. So we're going to it, defy the laws of physics. The stat, yeah, no, it's 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 free energy. Yeah, it, free. It's infinite free energy. He the stat that he gave on the show that I thought What's was that, fascinating was saying a basically a ten by ten by ten basically a cube ten by ten of, yeah. of water would be enough to power the entire world. Yeah. For the amount of energy we use right now. Yeah, yeah. A 10 by and, 10 by and, 10. And create, it's, like, no, it's like this room is and the waste, significantly bigger than and that. And the waste would be water and oxygen. Yeah. So the, the the promise of this literally well, is- We're going to have to get rid of that. Well, you could you could, you could could literally change- Oil companies aren't going to be cool with that. No, you could change everything with this. Uh, yeah, imagine, if, imagine if in, energy in the future is free. Well, I mean, okay. People need to look at the- There's actually charts that show this. When you look at the growth of the human- population on earth and the change in wealth and medicine and progress and that kind of stuff. Uh, it's very closely connected to our ability to harness energy. Now, to date, there's nothing more effective, cheap, easier to transport, whatever, than, than carbon-based energies, okay? Regardless yeah. of what they try to tell you about solar energy and water, it doesn't come close yet. The tech's not there yet. Carbon-based energies are the are so far the best, except for nuclear power, which people don't want to touch because everybody's scared of. But they do they do a great job compared to what we had before that. But of course, the byproduct is waste, and we can you know create more you know toxic gases and that kind of stuff. Fusion is would would change everything. It would change the world more than the industrial revolution changed for the world sure. Before. I mean, they they said that it would. Where is it? like where did they find these discoveries? Like what? it's not discovered. They're just they, they're continuously working on this and trying to where get it. where are they working on this? China, the U.S., Europe is making these these changes and discovery. I think China made that. One of it would completely ones. eliminate any fears around global warming. Oh, we, we would reverse. We completely. would actually reverse and and remove carbon from the atmosphere and change our own environment. We could. We could, yeah, we but could, how do you tax everybody? We could put that? oxygen on other planets and create other planets that are hospitable. Like yeah. literally, it would be, it, 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 the the sky would be the limit. So you know, reading about this is incredible, and we're probably 
30, 40 years away from some tremendous breakthroughs and maybe 100 years away from what I'm talking about where it's like limitless free mm -hmm. energy, which is insane. Yeah, that was his prediction on oh, the, what's his name on all, the, all in podcast. Yeah, uh, why, why can't I can't think of his Sultan of Science. Can't yeah, that, that's his nickname. <laughs> I can't, can't remember his uh, name. Date, is it not? Because there's David is Sachs and there's David. No, 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 no. Jason Kalkanis is the host. That's you right. See, I hear, I, see, I hear breakthroughs like that. I just, I get really cynical because I know it's like, there's just so many other forces you know out there to to combat it. Lizard people. I, I don't again, know though. I feel like, off Instagram. like I, how do you <laughs> how do you convince all these powerhouses to just be okay with that? Oh, it'll it'll be a it'll be a, a fight. I would imagine. exactly. Do you I would, think so? I you know, I think like something like this. That's like I mean that's probably one of the disrupt our entire way of of doing everything. Well, we've been through disruptions before, right? Like um, you know the 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 steam engine. Uh, and then, of course, the internal combustion engine. I mean, it completely changed yeah, everything. Totally. So, I mean, will there be a fight? I don't know. I think when they see the writing on the wall, they'll probably move in a direction where they try to figure out, you know, where they could. You Friedberg, know. David Friedberg. There you go. He's the guy that was on. He's there. The, yeah. Well, dude. I mean, that's cool, man. I'm yeah. all for it. Speaking of science and cool stuff, um, I think Caldera's serum also reduces inflammation on the skin. What? Mm. So maybe it's going to help with my fat face? No. <laughs> no, yours is not inflammation. <laughs> There's no hope there, dude. That's, That's just fat. Yeah. 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 I think you have to use preparation it's H all the for that kind of, yeah. of anti-inflammatory. What? You know that the people will do that for bags into their eyes? They would put pr the hemorrhoid cream on? To take <laughs> I haven't heard Did you know that? that? That's like no, a secret I of the celebrity. Heard that before. Yeah, dude. I, they put I the freaking I mean, hemorrhoid Botox cream on. Botox and all that stuff. But no, I'm, no, I, uh, Caldera, I, you know, my, I was, a, a, my skin was a little inflamed, uh, cause I was out in the sun over there in Florida and, you know, you're traveling and plane and it was a long ass day. And I didn't bring my, my serum with me on the trip. So I, I, and I swear to God, I put it on. And within 20 minutes, I could see like a, a difference in my face, just now, healthier. Is there something in it that actually combats yes. that? Okay, so you're not just pulling this out. No, your ass. no, no, so no. They a, have you can the, back this with some science. Yeah, okay. they have. I mean, if you look at the extracts that are in there, some of them are in there to balance out your pH. Some of them are in there to hydrate, to replace your your skin's natural oils if you wash your face. And then some of them have these kind of anti-inflammatory effects. And I noticed that, like, I put it on. It's like 30 minutes later and I'm looking, I'm like, man, I could tell like my face looked like it calmed down. That's the best uh, description I can have is I fit, like my face calmed down mm. from putting, they crush it. Yeah. You know that, so you know that. It's so uh, weird how it counterbalances like all those things, like you said, the oily versus the dry. Cause very yeah, cool, very from, good formula. I felt like even just being in that climate, like I'm not a big fan of humidity, but it did do wonders for my skin. Yeah. You know, just being in that. Yeah. Now, do you guys wives take your? Because Jessica basically steals mine now. Like she's like this. Courtney is mine now. uses mine all the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Katrina's used it, but she's she isn't. She's got her own little thing that she's doing right now, and I've been slowly trying to convert her over to mm. going Caldera because I have no idea what works. Spe her spending for hers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's more than what it costs. So now, do they, they still market directly to men? Because it, it is like one of those things. She's like, why do they do that? Because like it works great for me. Well, I think I don't I think know. It's just the, how I think they got they, in the market. I think right? they market to women now too. Yeah, I but, think that's also like a strategy to start off, right? If totally. We, let's first get this. I mean, it's kind of like like Viore. Yeah, like Viore yeah. did with the athleisure wear, and then mm -hmm. they branch out into the the woman's market too. So you know, speaking of brands and brands we work with, a brand that we used to work with that I was super fascinated. Did you know Liquid Death had a commercial? Oh wow. Yeah, they had it. Like, the Super Bowl, Bowl commercial. Yeah. 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 I was uh, really. They had like a witch or something, like like putting some curse out there. Like, earlier. So it was a bunch of kids drinking liquid death. It was kids that were like pounding the liquid death and stuff like that. And it was the song, Breaking the Law, Breaking uh, the Law. Like they were yeah. playing that song. And okay. then the kids were all. And then a pregnant mom was like pounding oh, yeah. it. And so if you don't know the brand, you <laughs> it actually. Like it looks like beer at first glance. So I'm. I mean, it's pretty like clever relax, commercial. It's just water. For yeah. As far as making awareness for their brand, for obviously for us, you get it right away. But if you don't know that brand and you see these kids pounding this like beer like looking drink and then you see a pregnant <laughs> yeah, mom like smart. I'm sure it got the attention of a lot of people that had no idea with the brand. So it's pretty, pretty clever. And good yeah, marketing. Yeah, I'll give them that for sure. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Look, if you enjoy drinking the occasional glass of alcohol but hate the after effects, you got to try Zbiotic. So Zbiotic is a patented uh, genetically modified probiotic drink. That means it exists nowhere else. Only Zbiotic has this. And what you do is you drink this before you drink alcohol. Now, what these little bacteria do is they produce uh, compounds that break down the negative byproduct of alcohol 
uh, acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde makes you feel inflamed. It can make you have headaches. It can mess with your sleep and feel crappy. And your body has a tough time breaking this down after you drink alcohol. But when you take Zbiotics, it breaks it down much easier because these bacteria help your body do that. This is a revolutionary product. It's one of my favorites. And we've actually tested this out many times. Um, and it's pretty crazy how good you feel the day after trying Zbiotics. So go give it a shot, especially if you like to enjoy the alcohol every once in a while, but you'd like to stay fit and healthy and you like to feel good. Head over to mindpumppartners.com, click on Zbiotics, and then use the code MINDPUMP22 for 10% off your first order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Grow with Lulu. What are the best things to do when taking an active rest day? Active rest day. First, we should define that, right? So a rest day in this particular context is a day where you're not doing your structured workout routine. Active meaning you're not just sitting there laying down and resting. You're doing something active but that's not structured exercise. Yeah. Which All mean, rest you know, days should be active. Yeah, which means point. it could be a bunch of different things, yeah. Yeah. right? I mean, you could use, depending on who you are, like, you know, maybe you need something that's way more restorative and you're doing like yoga or, you know, meditating. Uh, maybe you don't need something so restorative and so you do something like a hike outside for a couple hours. Like there's, uh, or it's a complete mobility day because you've been yeah. strength training really hard. So it could be a lot of different Yeah, things. I think the question is, right, what's the best? And So how would you rank what the best is? I personally, okay, so we could sit there and say, all right, if the person requires more mobility, if they require more conditioning, if mm -hmm. their goal is fat loss, muscle building, then this would be the best you know, prescription or whatever recommendation. But I never, I don't want to say never, when I got better as a trainer, I, I stopped looking at thing that way, things that way, except for my super hardcore performance uh, driven uh, you know clients. Most of my clients, the goal really was overall health and longevity. In other words, consistency over a long period of time. It's not just about training for an event. It's rather mm -hmm. like, how do I do this long term, enjoy it and make myself feel healthy and good in the long term, build muscle, burn body fat and feel great. In which case the criteria was what are you going to enjoy the most? Yeah, that, That's really it, right? Because there is no wrong answer here unless you're hurting yourself or training yourself inappropriately. I think active rest days should be based entirely over what you enjoy because that's going to keep you the most consistent and, in my opinion, give you the best long-term effect. So like maybe you maybe you would benefit more from you know mobility, but man, you really enjoy hiking and going outdoors and it's that enjoyment is probably more likely to keep you consistent on these active days, these active rest days. And that enjoyment, there's a lot of health benefits you get from that as well, especially when you're doing it with people that you like to be with, you know? Yeah, that, I mean, that's probably the most important thing. Uh, however, like if you have an athlete too, where like I would probably try to have them focus a bit on some of the movement and skill that would apply. So doing things at a very low intensity, mm. but uh, being able to kind of mechanically go through those movements so you're still um, basically like teaching your body these movements and, and repeating them constantly, which then sort of solidifies it uh, so it becomes part of the subconscious uh, at that point. But in terms of like your average person just trying to recover, just light expressive movements, any time that you can... I think personally, like being able to do things you normally don't do in terms of movements. So being able to articulate your joints and like rotate them a bit more and focus on that kind of stuff, I think uh, will help uh, in terms of being able to, uh, uh, you know, provide stability and support. Yeah, I don't I don't know how much I agree with you on this one, Sal. Um, not because you don't make good points, but because we people a lot of times do the things that they, they like to do and they neglect the things they probably should do. Uh, I don't know how many times I've had a client who has got a very high stress job and is burning the candle at both ends and their active recovery day is going out for a hike, but I would much rather see them do a yoga class for an hour. Or I've got a client that is hardcore consistent with their training, but they and they train heavy consistently. And then they their active recovery maybe is a sport they love to do and they love to go play basketball, but I need them to address and work on their mobility. Well, yeah, if so, people can eat perfect diets too, but we don't tell people to follow a perfect diet because it's Yeah, but I don't I, like I think saying a blanket statement like just do what you love to do on active recovery day is not what's best for you. Um, in the context of what is going to keep you active physically for the rest of your life, generally speaking, and most people could be 
better at being more active. Okay, you, you have a point there. And that's got to be number one, right? Sure. It's the inconsistency that's the biggest yeah, thing. Yeah, but on. sure. I, I still think that what someone asking this question is seeking, though, is like, okay, I, I, I hear what you guys are saying. I hear the, the benefits of active recovery. Okay, now tell me what I, I should potentially be doing. Now, that is going to vary and depend on the person. Like if they, if you were training them and your client specifically asked you that, mm-hmm. I don't think my answer would just be, oh, do whatever you want. Do what you love to do. I would, I would assess what their what their lifestyle is like and i would give them a recommendation that i think would be most so, beneficial so you're taking now it as like a like a, they're asking you more of a structured active rest day like what should like i do prescriptive one yeah yes. more pre- i think prescriptive is a word not structured it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be so structured where i'm like hey for i want you to hike for no, this no, it's no, like no, that's what i mean i mean like yeah like it's just prescriptive to their yeah goals. it's like okay, okay um, you know, yes, I agree with you being active and enjoying activity. Like, yeah, by all means, like, I think that has tremendous value. But if I have a client who I I'm in tune with their, their, their habits, I know their needs as far as movement. Um, and you or, know, they're going to do what you tell them. Yeah. And they're asking a question like this. They're saying, okay, Adam, what do you want me to do after recovery day? What's the best thing for mm-hmm. me? I'm going to give to them what I think is most beneficial. So for this person, since we don't know you, you need to. You have to have the self awareness to know: Am I somebody who burns a candle at both ends, and I'm I'm more guilty of pushing myself too hard, and maybe I need to work more inward for my day off? Maybe it looks like a sauna, jacuzzi, cold plunge, meditation type of day, or am I somebody who is got a very sedentary lifestyle because I work at a desk nine to five, and so I would have tremendous benefit from just going on a nice, easy, leisurely walk for two hours or something. So. I mean, for an active recovery day, it could be all the things we're talking about. And I think, Mm -hmm. yes, to your point, trying to choose things that are going to keep you consistent. But I also think that you there's there are things that each, the individual could be doing on that active recovery day that will benefit them more than yeah, other things. If I know yeah. they're going to do it, it's like if someone asks me what's the best diet or what's the best form of cardio. Like there's there's two answers. One is the best for you. Mm. Two is the one you're going to do the most consistently, right? And for most people, the challenge is about consistency, which is why you know I answer it that way. But you know the yeah. benefits of active recovery are that you recover faster. It's healthier for you. I used to think that the best way to recover was to do nothing. Yeah, you, you have hard work well, and then no, do nothing. Blood flow, like that's. Yeah. I mean, that's all part of the healing process. It's that- it's it's not true. Movement facilitates recovery far better than yeah. just sitting and laying in bed. That was a huge mistake. Yeah, that's why I think too. Like if you're just painting a broad stroke, like in yeah. the, why I'm I'm more inclined to kind of tell people to move laterally or twist. It's just because like it's just not something you're programmed to do, especially in your programming for strength training. A lot of people don't consider those things. So to be able to at least you know try to focus on maybe like two things you can do that'd be an easy yeah. one. what's your guys's favorite forms of active recovery like what do you actually do when you're doing active recovery well so i i think i actually bounce between all the things we're talking about right now i there might be and, I, and then the way i decide is kind of based off of what my week or my life where it's currently going is it pretty yeah. balanced or are you more likely to do one thing like over the other no I, i'm more likely to do what i think is best for me i have really? the discipline to say you know, but does that mean, has there ever been a time where I know this is what's totally best for me and then I ended up doing something else? Like, sure, that happens, but I try and make the decision on my active recovery days, the thing that I probably need most or what I should potentially add into yeah, my routine. I'm way more with workouts consistent, like with what I, you know, but when it comes to active recovery, I, I just love walking and hiking. It, I just get so much out of it. Uh, yeah. I don't know, non-physically, right? Emotionally, spiritually, whatever you want to say, going outside, being with my kids and, and my wife. Mm-hmm. So that's almost like nine out of 10 times if I'm doing something active recovery, it's that. It's walking or hiking. That's the low-hanging fruit for me. Like it's the easy one. To me, it's like the default, uh, I should do X, Y, or Z. I don't really feel like it. Well, the bare minimum, I'm going to go move yeah. because I know that will facilitate uh, recovery and it'll yeah. help. It'll burn calories. There's p- benefits to it for that specific day, and then also the recovery process. So to me, the the go for a nice walk with Katrina or something is the bare minimum yeah. I'll do, and then I'm probably trying to do some yeah, of the it's other. It's funny because I don't even think of like I don't think of the calorie burn or any of that stuff. I just like hey, let's go do something, and mm-hmm. I like doing this thing, and it's and it's moving. I don't want to just sit. Oh, down. I do. I definitely think now because I, I'm so aware, um, and I think mainly because of uh, the business now, never in my life have I uh, been so uh, sedentary. Uh, easily, I know, crazy? in yeah. this job, I easily could string a week together, a whole week, 
where maybe I average 2,000 steps in a day. Like if it's a crazy, Easy. we're on calls, we're flying places, we're doing stuff like that, and we're not really walking around very much, or maybe I didn't get in very many workouts this week, I can look back and go, holy shit, I only walked 2,000 steps. So, And I know what a difference that, that is on, on a just an activity for calorie burn for me that I'm like, dude, oh, I, need you're to, training, I need to get out and just move. Well, when you're training clients in a gym, I was doing 10,000 oh, steps on my ice clothes. And yeah. you're picking up weights and moving them around and all that. Totally. Yeah, it all adds yeah. up. I so. never, this is the first time in my life I ever yeah. sat down. Now, obviously, I enjoy doing this, so I'm not complaining, but I never sat down this much in my no, entire I life know. at work. I never sit down at home. Yeah. And that's just kind of as a result of, of being in this environment. I'm very yeah. conscious of that. Yeah. Being out, standing up, walking around, picking things up, you yeah. know, and being like productive at, at home because it's just like, I need the movement. Next question is from Fozzie M. Is there a way to grow shoulders and back without the traps getting too big? Do deadlifts make traps bigger? You know, okay, let's talk about deadlifts first. Uh, deadlifts build the entire back. Most of the trap development, though, you'll get from deadlifts is not the upper. So I'm assuming this person's afraid of developing upper traps. like Because the, 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 your traps have different attachments and the muscle fibers point in different they don't directions. Want the no neck look. Huh? Yeah, so you could develop the upper traps which actually shrug the shoulders which and you're getting probably the holding process. Yeah, but when you deadlift, a lot of the developments in that mid trap area. You know, that's where you're going to see most of the development. So, can they build the upper traps? I guess if you have really good genetics for traps and Maybe, but it's more of that mid kind of trap area that you'll see near the rhomboids. These are annoying questions to me. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. This is definitely annoying, but to me, this is actually and the reason I picked it. Right? A lot of because, women are, say ask this question. Right. Well, yeah, it does, and yeah, it's very up. it's very uh, bodybuilder esque. And here's another example of like because I know for a long time uh, we tend to we pick on machines a lot, but here's where sometimes using machines have their value when I'm trying to isolate a part of the shoulder or take out something. The, the traps are a stabilizer muscle of the shoulder. So mm -hmm. there's, there's no way around it not working. But I'll tell you, doing something slow, controlled, and like with isometric contractions, right, and with a light weight is less likely to develop the traps than something that is done with like speed or power or like heavy, heavy loaded. Yeah. You're going to do something like that. Those those traps are going to have to stabilize that heavy, heavy load, especially on free weights compared to maybe doing something like a reverse fly on a cable machine or a, you know, a shoulder press on a machine. Like there's certain ways that you, you can do that. You know, that. it's funny. People are like, oh, overhead presses will develop the traps like crazy. I've seen more trap activation in laterals from people who do them wrong sure. yeah. than overhead presses. Sure. Laterals, first off, if you do them right, you you don't really the trap stabilize a little bit, but it's all delts. But m you see people do laterals. Yeah, heavy laterals are definitely. Gonna get you your know, it's funny. Today, I was working out with Justin. Him and I were doing laterals at the same time. Yeah. He was doing upper back trap laterals. I was doing side. Delt laterals, right. bodybuilder versus obviously athlete. Right. And it's very different. It He's, was weird. I was noticing that too. I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm doing these totally different. Yeah. Self. And the, 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 one isn't wrong or the other. They're very, they're just different. Right. But yeah. if you want just shoulder development, it's you keep your shoulders kind of depressed, lean forward a little bit. It's all, you know, here with the, with the hand facing down, you want more trap development. It's going to be a little bit more movement, a little bit more external rotation, squeezing the upper back a little bit. So laterals, in, in my opinion, are more responsible for this than anything else. Cause a lot of people will do, laterals the way you do justin because it allows you to move more weight they're not yeah. necessarily athletes they want to develop the shoulders it's like why, do, yeah, why doesn't do my this just like boil down to more focus on mind muscle connection yes yeah and so if you just want to if, if this is a serious goal of yours is to really just hyper connect to you know deltoids and and really just make sure that you do it very slow control yes. and with lighter weight yeah, well, that, don't that's, shrug the shoulder that's my you're... point of the machines right so if you're if you i ideally you have the ability Right, you've worked you've worked on the mind muscle connection that you can use free weights mm -hmm. and still be able to do like what Sal, the point Sal is making right now. But a good like way to regress that to kind of get to that place is to use machines to kind of help until you get really good at knowing how to like isolate parts of muscle. Even though it's impossible to completely isolate a part of a muscle, yeah. you can do. You definitely can do. You can redirect so you have more force. You can definitely elsewhere. do a shoulder press or a lateral raise or a rear fly with very little trap involvement yep. or a lot of trap involvement. Yep. And and what really makes a difference is your ability to connect to what part of the shoulder you're really targeting and think about that as you're moving through it and avoid the you know erratic heavy kind of like movement during a, a specific 
specific movement that you're trying to target a part yeah, of the shoulder. Yeah, I mean, rows, like if you don't shrug your shoulders, you depress the scapula, bring them down and back, you're not going to use tons of upper trap muscles. If you shrug the shoulders while you row, which some people do, then you're going to get more trap development. Obviously, pull-ups, pull-downs, almost no upper trap activation because the weight's coming down. But I don't think you should just stick to that. I've had female clients or uh, trainers even say, all I do are pull-downs from my back to avoid building my upper traps and they end up developing really bad forward shoulder because mm -hmm. they don't strengthen those mid back muscles very well mm -hmm. and they end up with this not good look anyway so i mean avoid shrugging avoid explosive ex avoid explosive movements and <laughs> and train your shoulders and back like a bodybuilder yeah where it's mind the muscle don't train like an athlete because if you do explosive athletic type movements you're going to involve the traps quite a bit this is why it's some athletes is that you football players I don't think they ever do shrugs, but you see lots of cleans and explosive movements, and they got incredible, you know, trap development. Next question is from Fulvio Castle. What's the best way to attract someone into fitness when they seemingly don't care? Oh gosh, Ooh, boy, that's a, be the example. Yeah, I, 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 it, the it, I no, it really is. It's like uh, it's like talking to somebody that is like a Bible thumper, right? And you're oh, like, yeah. dude, your your way of of leading people to Jesus is the wrong way. Like, you're going to hell. Trying to yeah, trying to force work. it down people's throat. It's always rejected. The same thing goes with fitness, man. Like if you are trying to tell them all the things they're doing wrong or even all the things they that you can do. And I know a lot of people come from a good place. Like uh, this question always stems from somebody who has a partner yeah. or a mother or a father. Yeah. Who it's they frustrating. Care, right, who they care about. And I, I, I totally understand this because f the first half of my career, I was asking the same question. Yep. Like, man, I want to I want to save my family, you know? Just like I think some of the Bible thumper people are thinking too. I think they come from a good place. I don't think they're trying to seem self-righteous, but it comes off self-righteous. And so do you when you try and push people on fitness and the best way to do it is to exude it is to be the person who lives the brand. No, it's not a guarantee. It's only it's the no. only successful way though. Yeah, exactly. It's not a guarantee even then. It's just but it is the only way yeah. that I think it's going to ca catch. Yeah, I've done that cuz I, I was like you, I would just try and force it on everybody and I'd go to my parents' house and clean out the cabinets, piss them off, it never worked. And then I just stopped and you just kind of do your thing. And then what you find is and it doesn't work on everybody. So again, it's not a guarantee. It's just it's just if it's going to work, it's the only way. You'll get people ask you like, "Man, you got so much energy." Or Man, you look really good. Like, can you, you know, can I do something to help me? You know, my shoulders more developed, or to build my back better, or you know, I got pain here. Can you show me some exercises? Now they're receptive, and you can kind of help them out. The other thing too is, if it's a partner, you know, make it something that has to do with connecting over the with the two of you, and it doesn't, and don't make it structured workouts. This is a mistake. Like, hey, honey, let's go spend some time together. Follow my workout. Uh, it's not gonna work. How about like let's go in the hey do you want to go to the beach and do yeah. this hike and we'll have yeah, some just nice start lunch with little hikes yeah yeah and then you're active as a side effect of kind of something that they enjoy and then they'll start to maybe find more enjoyment out of doing it but you are not going to force somebody to do something that they don't want to do if anything you'll actually prolong the the time it takes for them to try and do it so true it's it's a hundred percent yeah true. you just have you have to wait you have to wait for them to come to you it's like it's like sales I tell people it's in mm -hmm. sales like you can push somebody into a sale and then they're going to have buyer's remorse and they want to return it afterwards. But if you can pull them into a sale, make them feel like they're asking for it or they want it, it's a total different experience for them. And the same thing goes when you're trying to sell them on the idea of working out, being fit and eating healthy. It's like the best thing to do is to, to, be, to live it by example, allow them to see how it carries over into your life and how it makes you such a better person without you having to say anything. And then eventually they ask. Not all, like you said, mm -hmm. but if you want it to stick and it to really change their life, the best way to do it is through your own. Yep. Next question is from Sarah Larson. What's the healthiest choice for alcohol? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a funny question. And now, yeah. Okay, so before you answer this, Sal, because I'm sure you have an answer for it, um, when quote unquote healthiest, right? The, yeah. the if you read online and you Google stuff, that the the answer you're going to get is the lowest calorie one. Mm -hmm. Is there any other uh, alcohol choices that provide any other? I, wine, I know that the, they tout the antioxidants, yeah. right? Yeah. Can we look up gin too? I've heard a lot of people touting gin is like a shot, like having some kind of health benefit to it, uh -huh. and I don't know if that's like because vodka is one of the lowest calorie. Uh, it is. 
you had drink like hard alcohol drinks. Well, that makes the most sense. Right? And so if you were gonna if you were gonna do quote calorie. unquote healthiest, you would do something like tonic water and mm -hmm. vodka yeah. or a vodka shot would most likely and that's purely not because it's healthier, but because it's lowest lowest calorie. Yeah, okay. So first of all, there is no healthy alcohol. So. Yeah, that's why it's <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. Question. Contrary to uh, you know, popular media. Um, there are no health benefits to alcohol. Now, you could argue that maybe the health benefits could come from connecting with people, you know, the traditions that they involve. And yeah, there's health benefits to that, but the alcohol itself um, is not is not healthy. Now, you will re, and, and at all, by the way, it's connected, any amount of alcohol increases risk of, uh, of cancer, for example, and studies will show that. Um, so it's just not healthy at all. Doesn't mean you shouldn't drink it. I enjoy alcohol sometimes. <laughs> it's not not that big of a deal. Um, now, as far as health is concerned, here's what you're going to hear. You're going to hear, well, wine contains antioxidants and resveratrol, and gin contains these, you know, it's made from these berries. Juniper berries. Tequila's got this, these, these, these compounds that don't get utilized like sugar, so it's better on insulin. Okay, those are all such oh, like- They always use the antioxidant angle. It's to all of them are these minuscule thing, like benefits to any of these drinks. First of all, you're not going to drink enough- wine to gain whatever benefit you get from the yeah. antioxidant stuff. <laughs> the alcohol Com negates it. Totally. You get it just <laughs> as much from smelling a strawberry. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Blueberries, you know, just eat a couple blueberries yeah. in your set. Really what you want to look at is what, what the biggest impact on my health uh, negatively is going to come from the, the calories right. from, and, and from the alcohol itself. Right. I could say this, there, you may be able to make an argument about like having a small hermetic effect. If it's like, not like that much, but like you're introducing it almost as like anything else, like, you, you know, is like plants provide certain hermetic effect because of like certain toxic uh, uh, elements there. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't, you know, like but, I said, if you look at the studies on alcohol um, by itself, it's just not healthy. Again, though, sometimes it's connected to health because sometimes it's connected to other behaviors that may be healthy. For example, traditions, uh, rituals, uh, you know, maybe it helps you connect with your friends. Obviously, you can overdo that as well. But by itself, no, it's not healthy. And so, you, okay, if you want to pick the healthiest, you go with the lowest calorie and you hit the nail on the head. Right. It's vodka. Right. Bodybuilders had it right. You know, you look at bodybuilders when they go drink, what do they have? Yeah. Vodka, you know, water, vodka, yeah. soda, water, vodka, yeah. tonic or whatever. So it's going to be the lowest calorie thing. Now, here's what I have to say about this. If you're going to go drink alcohol, um, you know, here's the real benefits of it. It's, it's the environment, the people you're with. It's, are you enjoying yourself? In which case, I don't care what kind of alcohol you're drinking. Pick the one that you enjoy because that's the point, right? Yeah. That's the whole point of, in my opinion. Well, no, if, that's, you're, if you're looking for one that's the healthiest, you're probably doing it too often. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. just going to no, say No, that's, that. really, that's a good point, Justin, because, I mean, we we just we were just in Florida. We would, at the day that Sal flew, Doug, Justin, and I, we basically laid out on the beach all day. You had the little flag, and they bring you over drinks and food. And uh, I had decided that this is a very rare occasion yeah. that the three of us lay out at the beach all day and have someone serving drinks to us. Not once did it cross my mind, ooh, what should I, I should get the lowest calorie <laughs> yeah, one. Dude. Like it's, I wanted the one I that wanted to enjoy window. because that's what I was doing at that point. It wasn't yeah. like a mission to get drunk. It wasn't just another weekend where I'm getting drunk again. It's like... This doesn't happen very often. I want to. We're in the sun, a you know fruity daiquiri type of drink, which is not something I would drink if I was in a bar or at a wedding or something like that. It was the, for the moment, and it never crossed my mind at how many calories it has compared to something. Yeah, else. I think you're missing the boat, and you're right, Justin. If you're like really like trying to you know get all the healthiest options, about you're probably drinking so much of it that this is <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's probably calm down. In yeah. which case, yeah, then it might yeah, you drink might, less. You might want to yeah. Why don't you start by by drinking less? But yeah, it's. The, it, the the point isn't that right. So if I drink alcohol, I don't think to myself, "What's the healthiest option?" Uh, unless I drink a lot, I guess it would be, you know, what do I enjoy drinking? And I'm doing this with my friends, and that's the whole point. You know, it's like, right. it's like if I go out to eat pizza, like, yeah, I could get the the healthiest pizza version, but why not get the one that tastes the best? Because I'm with my friends and I'm enjoying myself, right, right. you know, type of deal. So, I think that's the whole point. Now, I will say this: um, you can, uh, you know, we work with a company called Zbiotic. And Zbiotic does, I mean, this is a pretty wild product. It definitely has a huge impact on the negative effects yeah. that I get from alcohol. Like when I drink alcohol, first off, I used to rarely, almost never drink it because I always felt like complete garbage the day after, always. And so mm -hmm. I almost never, I was like, almost never. Yeah. Just wasn't worth it. Didn't matter. Didn't have it. 
Now you'll see me have the occasional alcohol because the Zbiotics, I don't get that same inflamed, crappy, you know, feeling uh, afterwards, which I guess it comes from this this byproduct of alcohol that your body has trouble kind of breaking down, which in which case is he about. So that, that, that's one thing you could do. In other words, pick the drink you want to have, enjoy yourself with your friends. And if you want to do something that'll maybe reduce some of the negative effects, then do the z but don't worry so much about the type of alcohol. Uh, look, uh, if you like our show, you got to head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out our guides. We have all kinds of guides. They're all free, by the way. They can help you with almost any fitness or health goal. You can also find us on social media. Now, Justin and Adam are both on Instagram. I got kicked off. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. Follow us on Twitter. Adam on Mind Pump Adam. And now I'm on Twitter. So I'm not on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. And I'm and going, get kicked off. going harder than ever. <laughs> uh, and you can find me on Twitter at Sal underscore DeStefano. 